Hey everyone, this is Legal Cut Pro, a Canadian entertainment law podcast. My name is Greg Pang. And I'm Michelle Molyneux. This is our very first episode that we're recording as an introduction to ourselves for the listeners out there and as an introduction to the podcast and what we plan to do about it. We might as well just get right into it then. Yeah, no, let's like, do it. So yeah, so let's... Uh, oh yes, the disclaimer. Right, we have to... Very important legal disclaimer. <laughs> yes, because we are lawyers and we have to mention that this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice. If you require legal counsel, you should go seek legal counsel. All right, with that out of the way, <laughs> let's uh, talk about... Well, we're going to talk about three things for this introduction episode. First, we're going to introduce ourselves, you know, who we are. We're going to talk about, you know, why we started this podcast. And as well, what, what do we plan to do with this podcast? You know, what are, what are our goals for this podcast? So I'll ask you, Michelle, please tell the listeners who you are. So my name is Michelle. Um, I've been an actor in the film industry for uh, about 15 years now, getting close to. Um, my parents weren't entirely keen on me... Um, just solely going off and being an actor, so they insisted I needed to get a backup plan. So I thought, oh, I know, what's easy? I'll get a law degree. (laughs) And was it easy? No. No? (laughs) No, no, I wouldn't advise doing it myself. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, so uh, now I, um, I do work in the law, and uh, so I'm both a baby lawyer and a baby producer and still an actor. Okay, excellent. So where did you get your law degree? Uh, University of Alberta. All right. And uh, when did you graduate? Uh, 2015. Okay. And yeah. I guess how, how was your experience at uh, law school there? I, I didn't go to law school there. I went to law school at the uh, University of Ottawa. So like, um, how, how, was, how was the law school at the University of Alberta? Uh, like the faculty and the students are all amazing. Law school itself was just really, really hard. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's just, it's supposed to be, right? So yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, in the end, I, I, you mentioned it was very hard, but in the end, did you enjoy the experience, I guess, the law school experience? You know, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that I've learned and mm-hmm. um, sort of the analysis and logical skills and all those sorts of things. So right. it was good in the end. It just took a while to get there. <laughs> and I'm just curious if you, if you care to share, uh, and maybe maybe the answer is obvious, but it's not obvious to me. It's like why your parents? You mentioned that your parents were not. What, what, what were the words you used? Too thrilled with your uh, choice to be a professional An actor? actor? <laughs> yeah. 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 Why, why was that? I think they were just worried because they know the industry; it can kind of ebb and flow. So they wanted me to to do the the traditional route. And, and and it does ebb and flow, definitely. Like in, yeah, in wild swings too, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, we we will be talking about a little bit about uh, in the state of industry too at, at some point in our podcast, I guess. So uh, and right now, the firm you work for, you work for a criminal uh, uh, law firm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm with uh, Batos Law Group, so mm-hmm. I work there just doing uh, research and that type of thing. So okay, yeah. So any interesting cases that you can actually talk about? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> All the interesting stuff you cannot talk about right now. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how, how is that kind of work anyway, doing research at uh, Batos Law? It's, you know, I really enjoy it. You, yeah. um, it's really amazing getting to help people. And oddly enough, I find criminal law is actually quite related to a lot of the stories that we tell through the film industry. Okay. So it's neat to kind of... Um, you're, you're watching your own mini movies of seeing human behavior and how people interact and the things they do. So, Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. So I've never uh, practiced any criminal law, nor have I worked for a, a criminal... Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to backtrack a little bit there because I did a little bit of... I don't remember what it was called, uh, uh, like legal aid. Uh, so, so I touched mm-hmm. for maybe a month on, on criminal law, um, but uh, I haven't done any kind of substantive work whatsoever in criminal law. So is working for a criminal law firm just like on Law & Order? Exactly like exactly, it. <laughs> exactly like law, law and Order, right? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that's what I always thought. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. You, get, you guys get all the glamour, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> well, us corporate solicitors are just at our desks uh, slaving away, so. <laughs> what kind of law do you practice, Greg? I practice corporate commercial law and intellectual property law, but not all intellectual property law. My... Uh, 
areas of intellectual property practice are pretty much confined to trademarks and copyright. And the copyright portion, and that actually leads to the other, it's not so much an area of law, but an industry that for which I, I apply my uh, law practice is the entertainment industry. So you can call it entertainment law, I suppose. And that's, of course, relevant to this podcast. Um, yeah, so th- those are br- in broad general strokes what my, my practice areas are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. And I hear that you teach as well. I do. I do. I'm a, a rookie sessional instructor at the local university here in Edmonton called um, McEwen University, formerly Grant McEwen Community College, but now McEwen University for a while now. Um, and I teach real estate law. Mm-hmm. I don't practice real estate law. And this, uh, you know, I, I don't hide this, but I teach real estate law, which is kind of funny, but it's not as bad as it kind of sounds because I don't practice real estate transactions and there is a separate mm-hmm. course for real estate transactions. So a lot of and uh, d- does touch on areas of my practice, bec- uh, like especially the corporate and uh, commercial area uh, where I do touch on a lot of uh, like aspects of r- real property. So a lot of it is educating myself again on some of these concepts, but it's gratifying as well to, to teach uh, from a point of practice as well. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so I teach real estate law and it is as a first time sessional instructor, it's been an education for me as well. Hmm. The, the expectations are much, much different than, than when I was uh, in undergrad, which was a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago. <laughs> it's actually 20 years ago, I think. <laughs> this is, was a, yeah, I'm, I'm older than I look. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's the Asian thing, right? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> good genes, good genes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I do uh, teach at the, um, I am a sessional instructor there, and I'm hoping to expand the areas that I, I teach in and hopefully do more with intellectual property in the future. And will you put any answers for your exams in the podcast to get your students to listen? <laughs> You know, I will think about that. But that that's uh, <laughs> that'd be, uh, I wonder what uh, my ethical obligations in the university are to promote my own podcasts <laughs> that have nothing to do with with real estate law <laughs> to tell them to yeah, yeah, you should subscribe and mm-hmm. listen to my podcast because I will tell you the answer to question 2 of the next midterm. It's a good way to and, start subscribers, I yes, think. And we'll bury it right in the middle of the podcast too. So. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right. So, now we'll get to talk a little bit about, you know, why we why we started this podcast. So, well mm-hmm. actually, you know what? I should actually explain to to listeners part of my background relevant to this being an entertainment law podcast is that I did work in the industry, the mm-hmm. film industry for a short time after I finished my undergrad which was way back in, I think, 2000. Uh, it was either 1999 or 2000. It's so long ago, I, I, I tend <laughs> to forget these things now. But uh, I, I worked in film for a good five years. You know, everything from starting out as a, a production assistant mm-hmm. in the locations department, uh, very fond memories of that, and <laughs> to various uh, production office roles, uh, all the way to a distribution slash marketing company in, in Montreal for a short uh, while too. Wow, that's Be- cool. Before I had enough, and then I had to, and then I decided to go to law school. So, so yeah. Anyway, so I thought that might be relevant uh, background. That's really cool. Did you have any favorite projects that you worked on? Favorite? I don't know uh, if I actually watched any of them beyond like uh, like a, a rough cut or something like that. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say I have a favorite. I, I, you know, I have memories and times where it was difficult or it was fun. So mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't narrow it down to a specify it to a favorite project or a, a worst project. I just say that uh, it just broke down to different moments. So and I know that's a complete cop out answer, but that's the answer you get. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, with that out of the way, um, let's let's talk about why we started this. So, well, I want to ask you, Michelle. So, I asked you to co-host this podcast mm-hmm. with me. Uh, so, why did you even agree to do that? Um, I would say as, as a baby lawyer and a baby producer, I have a lot to learn. And I feel working on this podcast with you will kind of help to... Uh, guide me to areas and research deeper into mm-hmm. areas so I can help find those answers that will 
uh, maybe help others learn as well. And um, I would also say I, I just I love the idea of getting more information out that can maybe demystify some of the legal processes within filmmaking. So I feel the easier that we can make filmmaking within Canada, I think the stronger our industry could be. As the more people who are able to kind of tackle their projects, tackle them faster, more efficiently, hopefully without lawsuits. <laughs> right, right. Oh, no, very well said. Um, and actually, this is something I should have asked you just a, a second ago was, okay, so, uh, and uh, maybe your answer is uh, within uh, that answer there, is uh, your interest in entertainment law in particular. Mm-hmm. So obviously, you worked in the entertainment industry, you're, you're a lawyer now, mm-hmm. and you have a particular interest in the practice of entertainment law itself. So uh, you want to just talk a little bit about you know their, your interest in entertainment law? Yeah, I think um, just combining sort of my experience with law school and legal practice, yeah, just kind of starting off in the industry trying to kind of blend my two worlds into one. So entertainment law seems a natural fit for that. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Good stuff. All right. So um, let's see. Let's move on now. Oh, yeah. I guess. Why am I doing this? I, yeah, so. <laughs> that's the important question. <laughs> I guess I, I'll start out with saying that I I really like the, the podcast medium. I am quite an avid podcast listener. I have subscribed to a, a whole number of podcasts and I really like the idea of podcasting and I, I love the the way like you can find almost any kind of topic that you want that you're interested in and I learn things all the time you know like some of the podcasts that uh, I listen to relevant to the the audience uh, and I think a lot of them listen to the Alberta Filmmakers podcast Mm -hmm. fantastic podcast with uh, Matt and Scott and uh, I I actually uh, keep up to date with a lot of industry happenings through that podcast uh, and uh, other ways I get my news as well about the industry so uh, Alberta Filmmakers Podcast, fantastic podcast. Uh, there's also something, another one I listen to, IP, Intellectual Property Fridays, and, um, and there's Business and Film as well podcast. Mm. So, so these are all things that I, I learn a ton from. And now in my, oh my God, 10th year of practice, I think that I w- would like to contribute to this medium, you know, because it's a medium I, I really, really enjoy. And I think that I can contribute uh, and I'm, I'm very happy that you agreed to do this with me. Yeah, so it's, it's, I'm excited. It makes, it makes it a lot funner than me just talking at this uh, at this microphone by myself <laughs> in a dark room. <laughs> and and yeah, so uh, so that's essentially it. Uh, like I, I like the medium, and I, I want to do this because I, I like sharing information and but not legal advice on the podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I just want to have some fun with it. So and we'll see where this takes us. Yeah. So that, that's essentially it. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and plus, there's a listener out there that can correct me, but I have only found one entertainment law podcast that is pretty much ongoing, uh, and that's an entertainment law update out of the United States with Gordon Firemark. But I, I have not found an equivalent one in, in Canada. So I mm-hmm. thought, well, there's, there's definitely room for this. Mm-hmm. Why not start it up? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and plus, podcasting is very cheap and easy to do. So uh, you can purchase some very expensive equipment or for a hundred bucks, you can purchase a microphone and download some free software or mm-hmm. uh, ha- get people to help you out with uh, that part and, and away you go. So I'm, I'm excited. Me too, me too. All right, excellent. So any personal or professional goals with respect to the podcast itself? I think you, you mentioned it mainly, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah just kind There's, of exploring yeah. different areas of entertainment law and mm-hmm. um, yeah, hopefully simplifying it for people because mm-hmm. I find uh, myself when I've had questions and I go to look for the answers, often the websites you're going to, the statutes you're going to, just there's so much data there's so much to work through yeah and you don't really know how to interpret it and that sort of thing so Mm -hmm. i think it'd be great to just sort of break things down so they're nice and easy for people yeah and i think you'll bring a very different perspective than i'm bringing to this as as uh someone who uh, on the on the talent side of the film industry bring all your experience with respect to that and you have an education and experience in law I think will will uh, be a very good perspective to bring to this podcast. So, so again, glad you're, glad oh, you're with well, me on this. Thanks for yeah. including me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's pretty much wrapped up in the the comments I just made in terms of my personal professional goals. Like, I had a friend of mine 
a lawyer friend of mine say, well, you're doing this just for fun, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, why are you doing this? You know, you're not going to make any money off of this. And it's like, well, no, I guess not. But, you know, you can't just be a, a slave to the practice of law. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think that to do something substantive like this, uh, talk about entertainment law, and for episodes like this, we have to do research as well. We're educating, partly educating ourselves as well. We're not just doing this on the fly and just, just winging it. So I think it's it's good for keeping up to date and being active about it if you don't want to sound dumb on <laughs> yes <laughs> on, a, on a podcast and i think i think but i have to verify is that we can mention this for the law society our annual reporting uh professional development plan or something like that oh yeah 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 because uh, i know you can like i think teaching you can put on it mm-hmm. so doing a podcast they should accept that, you know. I least. think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and That'd be good. The, yeah. The interesting thing is, you know, for other lawyers who might be listening there in, in Alberta, we don't have uh, what's called they don't have a point system like an accredited uh, CPD or CLE that you have to take and it has to be accredited and stuff like that. You you make a plan and you submit it to the law society. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they're going to switch at some point, but they should accept this as something pretty, you know, it's substantive. It's not just, not just us, you know, talking about how much we like the last movie or something like that. Right. So, yeah. (laughs) yeah. All right. So let's talk about what do we plan to do for this podcast? Do you want to talk a little bit about the target audience? Sure. Yeah. So I think um, our primary audience would probably be um, producers and filmmakers. I think we're going to cover different topics that might reach out to um, other interested parties in the film industry. So there might be some episodes where things might impact actors or photographers or all all of the different roles within the film industry. That that pretty much covers it. And I think that just to add to that, like independent filmmakers, you know, anywhere from what you're just thinking about or starting out as an independent filmmaker to being a, a seasoned filmmaker. Now, if you have 20, 30 years of experience and you're very knowledgeable about the legal aspects and work have worked closely with counsel or lawyer for those decades, then you might not be learning as much, but hopefully we uh, might be able to still give you some useful information. Or maybe they want to come on and share some of their useful That's information, right. too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be having some guests, too, right? So mm. uh, we don't want to disclose it right now, uh, some of our ideas for guests. And I've already contacted a couple. But uh, we will be hopefully having some very good guests that will bring a different perspective and expertise mm-hmm. to contribute content to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I have a really good podcast guest interview release that they're going to have to sign and they can sign it electronically too so (laughs) oh that's exciting (laughs) yes that's right (laughs) we can talk about electronic signatures as well right so yeah yeah yeah, at some point but uh yeah let's talk a little bit about some of the uh ideas we have um you want to start out michelle like you had uh, an idea about actra yes yeah that's one and dealing with um the ipa and what the implications are for that for producers Okay. And sort of, yeah, navigating that. I think that might be um, a topic for a lot of beginning filmmakers. And sort of, you know, at what point do you want to sign that? And do you want actra actors or do you want non-union? That sort of thing. Okay, excellent. And that's something I'm looking forward to hearing more about as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, and you're, of course, uh, you're a member of actra yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, okay, excellent. Excellent. All right. And... Before we started recording, you talked about uh, protecting ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a question that, um, again, a lot of filmmakers, producers, writers have concerns over um, when you're dealing with ideas, pitching ideas, how can you protect yourself, protect your ideas, while still being able to bring your ideas forward and negotiate and that sort of thing. Yep, and I think those are, that's a very good topic and it's something I get asked quite often. I gave a talk which you were at uh, yeah. not too long ago <laughs> at uh, FAVA, the Film and Video Arts Association. That sounds of, right. Of Alberta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, FAVA, F-A-V-A, uh, a little bit uh, on, on that, largely on that topic of protecting, can you protect an, an idea? Short answer, no, but we'll get, we'll get to that mm-hmm. <laughs> in more detail at some point. Some of the other ideas we have out there, we haven't actually done a episode by episode listing of topics, but uh, here are some of the ideas. So, talk about 
uh, errors and emissions. I know that sounds a little bit dry, but errors and emissions insurance always comes up. Not mm-hmm. always comes up, but it comes up quite often, at, at least in my practice. And I'm hoping to get a guest interview uh, on for that, uh, who is uh, very knowledgeable about uh, errors of emissions. I've had to work with the uh, Insurers Council um, on that on uh, many occasions, so it'd be good to get uh, uh, someone's uh, one of their perspectives on it. Uh, talk about corporate. You know, corporate, I, that sounds like, when, when I, that comes out of my mouth. I, I almost fall asleep myself when that comes out of my <laughs> mouth. But, but it's something that's very relevant to uh, filmmakers because it's, in the end, it, it's a business mm-hmm. as well. It's art, but it's a business. You're incorporating, well, likely, in, or many times you'll be incorporating either, you know, your main production company or and or you will be incorporating uh, single-purpose production companies. Mm-hmm. Um, and you might be required to do so. And talking about some corporate aspects, and a lot of times this is very dry and you know kind of cryptic, it, it could be educational as well. Uh, talking about the differences in some concept of intellectual property where you might hear American terms and uh, w- whether they mean what they mean in Canada, if anything at all, you know, such mm-hmm. as work for hire. You know, that's a, an American concept. And what does it mean in Canada as well? Uh, fair use, fair use as a concept and the equivalent in Canada being fair dealing. Hmm. We we'll talk about that and, and the differences there. And uh, some other fun topics I'd like to talk about protection animals. You know, yeah. Anim- animals, yeah. <laughs> animals in uh, in that that are used on in fi- on film sets and and the law around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have I have an idea of a guest for that, uh, and this inspiration actually comes from another podcast called Paw and Order. So, uh, a very good podcast, by the way, Paw and Order. So check that out. And let's see what else. Things like uh, like arbitration, you know, arbitration uh, within the context of collective agreements, different collective agreements that producers uh, sometimes have to work under in Canada, uh, and and some other maybe a little bit more advanced topics like securities regulations for private investment in, in film. So, yeah, that's something I actually, uh, yeah, that is something that is is something that even though I'm on the phone with clients, like almost their eyes, if I can feel, I like sense their <laughs> eyes glazing over. I talk about securities regulations. So, so anyway, so those are some topics and uh, that, that some ideas at least. And I'm hoping we'll have a little bit. It won't be just us just droning on about them, but we'll try to ground them in some kind of current issue mm-hmm. that's happening there uh, right now, uh, or, or at at that moment, or at least this is is contemporary issue, uh, whether it's in the news, in some kind of legal dispute, court decision, pop culture. Maybe we'll even reference something that happens in a movie or something like that, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, so uh, yeah, so so that's uh, uh, something to ke- keep it keep it fun, and because this is entertainment law, we want to entertain as well as as to, mm-hmm. as educate. Oh yeah, <laughs> what, do we have anything planned for episode the first substantive episode, Michelle? We do, <laughs> <laughs> and it's awesome, but we're not going to tell you what it is until the next episode. <laughs> yes, because things can change in the meantime, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually we actually got into a whole conversation about it right before we started recording. We said, "Oh damn, we should be recording this right now." Yeah, <laughs> it was actually it was actually really interesting. So. So, yeah, stay tuned, I guess, uh, as the old radio saying used to go. And uh, mm-hmm. we will uh, for our first substantive episode after mm-hmm. this uh, introduction. Should, we should wrap it up. We've been rec- recording long enough. So we told you a little bit about who we are, you know, what this podcast is about and what we intend to do with it. So hopefully you'll choose to subscribe on whatever your podcast, using whatever podcast catcher, uh, iTunes, uh, whatever that uh, this podcast ends up on, mm-hmm. and uh, that you you will choose to keep listening to us. I guess we're coming to the end here, so thank you for listening to this intro episode. Yeah, thank you, thank Michelle, you. for coming here on Thanks, a, Greg. this cold, dark Friday <laughs> yeah. evening. And where can, uh, where can uh, people find us? Uh, uh, we have emails set up. Mm-hmm. If you want to email us with any feedback, we welcome feedback, questions, suggestions. Yes, on, we'd love that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, on uh, episode topics. Mm-hmm. Greg at LegalCutPro.com or Michelle at LegalCutPro.com. And how else can people find you, Michelle? Instagram. <laughs> uh, you can find me on the gram at Michelle Molyneux. Perfect. And we have an Instagram account set up for the podcast as well uh, at uh, Legal Cut Pro. Mm-hmm. 
And you can actually find us on, we have the domain uh, registered and the site is, uh, the domain is going to redirect to a page on my website, legalgutpro.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Cyclaw. I know that sounds really weird. C-Y-C-L-A-W. I am your original cycling lawyer, as in bicycling lawyer. Oh. So well, we can save that for <laughs> another time. And uh, th- that's, uh, that's all for now. So thank you again for listening and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.